And welcome back to the 12th man. Delighted to be joined by, well, this man needs no introduction, Zach. That all after his last time show on here. We've got an hour special guest, Emmett, as well. Zach's a big Man United fan. Emmett's a big Liverpool fan. So we're going to be in the preview the big game at the weekend. These are top two going head to head. Um, well, as I have to say, it's probably the biggest Liverpool Man United game since the time Liverpool beat them 4 1 at um, Old Trafford. We were going to the league that year. Um, but that season, Liverpool, yeah, they beat them 4 1, but United came back, they won the league. So um, you just wonder how big the game is on Sunday. Um, I'm going to start with you, Zach. Um, oh. You're obviously on here um, about six, seven weeks ago. You made a few statements. One of them being you thought United could win the league, and mm-hmm. they are one being Liverpool might not finish in the top four. So, mm-hmm. how big is Sunday's game for them two statements? They uh, come true. Well, if we won all those six, clear Liverpool, but then your man said it. Now you're picking up a bit of form, so we if they just keep winning, like, so I don't want to be going down feeling and get a draw, like, I don't want to go into the downfield and get the three points. Get the job done, and uh, if we bit them, like well, t- like they're, I'm telling you, they're just not the same team we were last season, and they they could struggle to get top four if, like, if they bit us on Sunday, might kickstart their season. But I just can't see it. I can't see it happening. They go back like that. Um, see when it comes the the game on Sunday. Um, United yeah. fans are obviously going away a lot of confidence. Obviously, the top of the league. Um, they seem to be finding ways they want even when they're not playing um their best football. Do you think it's a completely different animal going to that Anfield um, in terms of do you think you have to play your best to get any sort of result or do you think you can um, this is a different Liverpool team to the team over the last couple of years? I don't know. I looked at their previous results. Like, it, like if they can't finish off teams like Mouse Brom and all, we have more ball than Mouse Brom. Like, so I think like if we get, the ch- if we get chances, like we will score goals. Like I, I, I do see, see us winning like, confident like, and us winning Sunday. Like. First time in years, like I've been happy going there. I get more results. Mm. Um, anyway, you've obviously heard what Zach's been saying there. Um, you've obviously um, Liverpool have obviously been the, the best team in the country over the last couple of years. Um, won won in the league last year pretty comfortably. I think it was about thirty points or so. Um, and then even last the year before, finished ninety seven points for yeah. him. But they don't win the Champions League, so if it, if it's been a really really good time to be a Liverpool fan. Um, do you think it? it obviously, this has been their sort of first pop in them a couple of years, but do you think Sunday's game, in some ways, is the perfect game to try and get your season back on track? You know, it's Liverpool Man United, you don't really need any any more else to say that it's United's coming to town, like. 100%, Gary. Um, it doesn't get much bigger in, in World Football, to be honest. For me, it's the biggest game in the world. Never mind, very much at Barcelona. Liverpool mm-hmm. and Man United, worldwide, it's just the biggest match there could be. Yeah. And, I know we're in bad form, but looking at United, he's have won matches by luckiness, I would say. Two two defective goals. I mean, one against um, what was a defective goal. Yeah. He got a penalty. It wasn't a penalty against Alton Villa. And then last weekend, the last week against Burnley, Pogba had, to, had a good ballet, but I mean, it went through the keeper's legs. So I'm hopeful he's going to get. Yeah. I think it's going to run out for United. And I think, well, I'm confident that we'll beat them Sunday, to be honest. We'll get into the predictions that are on, right? But one thing I want to ask you, right? That's rather than asking a few Liverpool fans, right? Why have Liverpool become so inconsistent this year? Because, like, this, this is just me personally speaking, right? I've been sort of watching them a lot. And when they beat Spurs and then they beat Palace 7 0, you're really yeah. expecting them yeah. going to run a game. You look at their fixture list, you've seen West Brom, Newcastle, Southampton. I think about Southampton. They are two you would expect most teams going to beat. And then Southampton, you know, it's going to be a difficult game, but it's the games Liverpool do one. So, them three games only pick up two points. Um, and you've seen it throughout the season, away from home especially, against the likes of Brighton, um, Aston Villa. You know, there's, been, there's been some really, really poor results away from home. So just in terms of the inconsistencies, where do you think that's come from? Um, to be honest, it's, I think it's about the formation. We've been playing 4-3-3 for so many years now, and it has worked, don't get me wrong, but I think teams that are... We struggle, we struggle against the lower teams, you mentioned at the start of the the podcast there that it was 08 09. Yeah. We lost the we lost the league title that year because we drew the, the Wii games. Yeah. I remember we, I team. remember getting better. I remember drawing me Stoke, Everton and Wigan yeah, three games in a row. I mean, I, mean, that, I think he's only lost two games that year. Right. Um and you know, lost uh, We beat the big teams. Mm. We we beat the big teams struggled against small teams and now it just seems to be the same kind of mm. same kind of results. 
We, I mean, we, we beat Chelsea, we beat Spurs, we drew in Man City, don't get me wrong, but we beat Arsenal. But it's a, teams that parked the bus are doing, getting the wee draws against us, to be honest. And club needs to find a way of, I don't know, may, maybe not change the formation, but maybe even, I, I won't put it this way, I want Shakira to start. Uh, you've actually hit the nail on the head, right? Because there's a lot of those things you were saying. I've been, I've been yeah. thinking that as well. I think that he do play a four for three quite a lot. It looks like there's no plan B. It looks like he doesn't really. If the team sort of yeah. find, find, sort of sit, sit, sit a little block against you, um, and they frustrate yeah. you for long enough, it looks like he's just running out, run out of ideas. And I look at the bench, right? And you say about Shakiri, possibly bring them on. But who do you take out of the team? Yeah. You're probably if you bring on Shakiri, you're probably taking off one of your strong stream maybe, and you're maybe possibly weakening the team. Origi, who's done his job over the last couple of years, doesn't seem to be, in, to be getting any any game time at all. So do you think, I know there's been a lot of problems yeah. with, in the defensive area, but do you think these are probably, with Jada out injured, he's look a bit light up front, and there's, he's probably could do be signing somebody, like a game changer, I don't know, with United saying Cavani, someone like that, they just come on and give you a different option? 100%. That's what I'm just going to say, right? the way I'm talking about different formations, like United have been able to adapt. Sometimes they play three at the back, five at the back, Sometimes they play in the four as a diamond kind of thing. Yeah. Like I, I want Liverpool to have a second yeah. formation like the way United do. I'm not mm. saying like the yeah, United team they look up to, but yeah, it's good the mean. way they have that formations. And Zach, just on that, hundred percent. Right, Zach, all right, Zach, just on that, right? See, oh, yeah. See when it comes to he's talking about systems there, right? And that's quite a mm. good point he made. All these chopped and changed quite a lot over the last couple of seasons, right? But do you think he's mm. finally found a system? That worked for him with the diamond. He's able to get Pogba, Bruno, and the same uh, team. And it seems to be bringing the best out of Pogba as well. The last few weeks, I've been very critical of Pogba. I'm still not his biggest fan. I think he needs to do it over a longer period of time to justify the price tag, to justify the hype around them. But he's, he's probably having his best season um, this year at United. Um, and do you think Oli deserves massive credit um, for maybe maybe putting it's almost unorthodox at him? Sometimes Pogba plays in the left hand side as well. It's quite hard to work out. But he, do you think he deserves massive credit for that change? Oh, well, he never gets credit anyway, no matter what it is, like, so I don't, it's, it's just, it's still don't understand it, you know, like, but, uh, I don't like the way he chops and changes this formation that much, because, like, I have a feeling, well, I don't know, but if he goes down, feeling him plays five at the back, like, you're, you're more or less putting, the fucking, you're giving a game to Liverpool, I would just go out and play, we've been playing 4 3 one the last couple of weeks, I just go out and play out there, play your best team, and just go and put it home, because, defensively, like, you can get at them, so, I, I have been playing, I like, I like the way he's able to change it, but at the same time too, I like consistency. Like I like the way Clap just like I like I like that four three three. Like the way they just play out every week. You know what you're going to get. Like, but um, sometimes you do need to like change it tactically, like to get the best results. Like, but I, I wouldn't mind seeing a bit of consistency in the team selection as well. Like, but see me pop as sometimes you say there's a diamond and there is a four three three one he plays in the left. But one thing I wanted to ask you, Zach, right? And this is something that I I'm not I'm not trying to compare the two managers at all. And that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, because you know. Klopp came a different um, resume to, to Oli. Oli came from Norway. They obviously had, had a team that showed up, they got relegated, so I'm not sure to compare the two. But see when Klopp came to Liverpool, right? See in them first two seasons, there was a lot of sticky moments. Um, you think about losing the cup final at City, losing the cup final, one all to Sevilla. There was a defeat against Watford, they were beat 3-0 at home. Even he won the second season, there was defeats to Hull. Um, there was a lot, a lot of bad moments. Um, and, and at the end times in Liverpool, they, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt and they stuck with him. Um, mm-hmm. But there wasn't, there didn't seem to be as much sort of a media frenzy around Klopp. He never sort of thought he was in any way going to lose his job. I mean, you have to remember, right, they did, they did finish, um, they lost the Champions League final. They had a great run to the final. Probably nobody expected to get them there. Um, they finished second, the Man City, or, uh, Man City. And then they got that Champions League final and that was Klopp's first trophy. So it took them What's that? Four seasons. They I know his first season they come in halfway three, but it took him his third full season they won a trophy. But he never seemed to be under as much pressure as Ollie's under. So do you think there's there's a media agenda against Ollie at times? It's just a bigger team, yeah. Or the bigger team, like you know what I mean. There's more like all the all the like, but no, but seriously, anything United does, ah, there's more pressure in United. Like it's just it's a given. Like we are the bigger team, like so. I understand that. Like I've, I grew up years like watching the United dominant league after league, like and go good runs in Europe and all. And there was still always could uh like no, was still always very critical of United. Like but I'm used to it. My election it doesn't even bother me in the slightest. But Klopp is a different. He's obviously more successful and so scared. But 
time will tell like who's gonna like See, the thing about it is gonna be good enough, like but at the minute like I the mm. thing about it is right Emmett, see if you Go look ahead. at it right put this Christ in the Emmett, right? See the way United are top league at the moment, yep. I know that was only January, right? But there still seems to be a lot more negatives than positives with United and the media by rival fans, even by some United fans. And so what do you where do you think that comes from? Is it just because maybe Ollie's not got the pedigree of like a Klopp, like a Guardiola? Um, uh, where do you think it comes from? And I, I, would, I would agree with that too. I, for me, to be honest, I, I can't see United winning any, any major trophies on their boy. I think he's a, last season, um, you were doing well after there was a dog down. And then every put past you, the he's went on a run. Yeah. Every year he's just came this come, come to a, a stop. And it's just, I think they made his right in the same way that they're not, you aren't playing great. You know, United's not playing great football. Maybe against Leeds, that was their best performance. Don't get me wrong, that performance was probably one of the best in the Premier League. But at the same time, I can see he's, I can see United playing games, even against Spurs, for example. Man City, that League Cup match. Yeah. You just so, watch your record. You haven't won any by games this season. I understand, all right. But yeah, I mean, so I don't think. Uh, I know what you're saying, but see the way I'm. I'm not trying to to compare the two, but if you think about Klopp's first few seasons, there was a lot of moments in M seasons where Liverpool looked short. You no, know, they didn't really. They really hurt a fence. I know. You, I know you think Klopp got Van Dijk and he got Allison eventually. Right. But you think about them first few years. There was a lot of times Liverpool like that. They would done a good run, and then they might play a Stoke or a Hull, and their world came crashing down. Mm-hmm. Me so. Oh, so uh, what, what what was the difference then with Klopp? A hundred percent. That's what that's what I was going to say to you. I think. Uh, I think it's that's uh, just previous. The media is going by what Klopp's done previously with Dortmund, yeah. and they're looking at. I'm not saying I don't agree with uh, with that part. I'm saying always should be given the chance, but he won the way Molde, and then he got relegated. Was it way uh, Cardiff? So I think they're just going based on off that there that they're they're not giving I. You're right in saying they're not giving only a fair chance to compare to what they gave Klopp at Liverpool. But everyone knew when Klopp came in, it was going to be a quick, even said, a quick fix. I think it was four or five years he said we're going to win the league up there. And yeah. so, doing it, like, but In your opinion, Ollie's been fast tracking and he's completely out of his depth on it and the job he's done. He's lucky to get that job just on his previous pedigree. I, I think he would. Why does, Lampard, why does Lampard not get the same? Lampard should get the same. He's he's coming a really scrutiny at the minute with uh, the media and even his own fans. Mm. But I mean, he didn't get as bad as uh, as low, But I, as I said, that's oh, you mentioned about being the bigger club. <laughs> I don't agree with you being bigger Liverpool, but you're definitely a bigger club than Chelsea. Like de- oh. definitely a bigger oh. club than Chelsea. Well, 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 no, but maybe that's why. Jack made a big point, a good point. there, right. Lampard, does he get away with it because he's English? Yep. No, it's the same as football players, Gary. The media no. will sing away football players and Dak and Rice, um, who else would you say? Well, don't get me wrong, I, I used to think Jack Gurley wasn't as good as um, he actually has because it's the right. last year, so he's been. I think he's proved it. Right. Chelsea are showing about getting the deck. So remember that they're trying to say that um, before Southgate got the job, they were shouting for an, an English manager to get. Do you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, he, he got them in the World Cup semi final, but who did they play during that World Cup run? I think it's just English media are just really biased. That's a point in general, Charles, but what I would say to you, Zachary, does Emma sort of give a few points there about Klopp's pedigree and you can't take away from Klopp, but do you think? That he has been treated differently because if you look at his first couple of seasons, right? Liverpool needed well the first season, and uh, they didn't finish in the top six, right? But they come on, come on mid season, somewhere they all they come on mid season, and both of them didn't finish in the top four, right? Um, Klopp's mm-hmm. first full season, they went to the last day of the season, they beat Middlesbrough, they finished fourth. You know, they, all his first season, they finished third. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities in there in terms of you know league position. Um, again, I'm not comp- trying to compare. I'm not saying Klopp. Or Ollie's a better manager in Klopp. No one's saying that. But I'm just trying to compare their two, their two starts at two English clubs they've been at, um, and they are quite similar. Like you talk about investment, Klopp, 
in the end, he probably went, it probably had a, a few bad ones, but in the end, he seemed to get that right with Van Dijk and Allison, and it completely changed the whole perception of Liverpool. Took him from being a top sort of team that was fighting for top four to one of the best teams in Europe. Um, so, do you think Ollie has been treated differently, Zach? They they like the likes of Klopp. I, I well, the guy definitely like, but it is, it is just it is like I agree the fact that the club was in Dortmund though he won the won the Bundesliga and all twice was it he won it yeah. and then he had a run the champion he had a good run the Champions League and all win but like you can't compare Dortmund they like mold like it's a two horse league in the Bundesliga like mold mold like it's not a big league like like mm-hmm. I'm not like, saying that I'm agreeing I'm saying the media will point point, point that that's what they, that's why they're probably negative towards towards Ali but I'm saying too. Liverpool squad when Klopp first came, have you put have you put that twenty as the squad that we got? Yeah, like, yeah, Klopp, better teams. Good, great you know point. I mean? Yeah, it's a great point you made. Um, I think Liverpool were in a complete mess when he came on. To be fair, I thought Rodgers done a really, really good job. Um, but after that sort of season, really funny second, it all went very sour. I thought he should have been sacked after the Stoke game because it was clear it wasn't going to work. Um, and mm-hmm. then they sacked him after seven or eight games on that season. To be fair to Rodgers, I think he's done a really, really good job. Celtic and Leicester, and it's probably if Liverpool a plot moved on. I, I don't think I think Rodgers would be up there on the list of candidates to get him back. Whether they would go back or not as an R as an R saying, but uh, back time we were chatting about sides there, right? Um, we were chatting about four three three, four two three one. Um, Liverpool over the last few years, right, have been a team that scored a lot of goals. And one of the big things about when I chat to some fans. I'm not saying they're misguided, they have their opinions and they're dating them, but they say our oh, defence, our defence, we're missing Van Dyke. Of course, any team's going to miss Van Dyke, right? But if you look at them, they manage quite well in defence, right? I think the only thing that's, that's killing them is Fabinho possibly playing there. They're losing them in midfield. Teams might get more chances, but the goal, goal return doesn't be bad. I think Kjarger spoke about it at the start of the season. Liverpool can, in most of the games Liverpool played last year, they conceded one goal. They won a lot of yeah. games, they won 3 1, for example, right? So they were always conceding at least one goal. You think about the start of the season, they conceded seven against Hull with Van Dyke, right? So they managed the I think Klopp's done a really, really good job with the defence. He's managed really, really well, and you have to give him credit, right? But one of the big areas at the moment for Liverpool is, is scoring goals has been a problem. As I said before in previous podcasts, a lot of one one draws. Um, so only scoring one goal. And you think about that front three who scored goals for fun. Um yeah. Salah's doing pretty well. The other team maybe not so much. One area I look at, right, and I think this is a massive must piece um, because he's not really performing these, these, these levels and he's a very victim of his own success. Um, it's Trent. Do you think that right back area at the moment, not a, I'm not saying it's a problem area, but do you think Trent has lost his influence and it's, he's probably one of your biggest creators in terms of chances? Do you think is that, uh, it's not happened so much this year? There'll be a problem on Sunday when Rashford gets a hit them out that left wing and turn the other <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Do you think that's uh, one of the big reasons he's going to be earning score as many goals? 100%. I guess I guess I guess the smaller teams, I because their their managers have kept copped on they where Liverpool get their most goals. Liverpool get their most goals from oh, Robertson right. and Trent. We don't we don't we, you don't really see Liverpool playing through the middle as much. We go at the wing. We do we cross the ball and all that. Right? Yeah, he's quite direct. These are a quite direct team. And I we are quite team. direct. We we have like Manny on the left hand side who he just runs at you and to cross the ball on. <laughs> Sal that more than a cut on his right foot. But on the topic of you so about Trent anyway. Hundred percent. He's been off this season, but I think it's factor because of how wide he's going. He's not able to cross the ball in as much because of the positions of the defence of the R team are getting on. But at the same time, on the topic of defence, I know you might disagree with this, but building building from the back too, and not having your I actually and Matty played in the not in the season we won it, the the year where we came second in the city. She had second half of the season. Matty was unbelievable. She came out with a ball and bring us on them so quickly. I just I thought Matty and Van Dyke. Still no, yeah, I always thought Matty was a better defender than Gomez. I think Gomez is a lot of a lot to learn still. Yeah. His positioning is it's just when you were putting in with Van Dyke and Andrew, it was Gomez and the younger boy Phillips in some games. It was just, you can't have Gomez controlling a, a defence, to be honest. But I, I think starting from the back, too, is we're not, we don't have the players starting from the back. We used to Van Dyke, used to put balls at the top, they Manny and Salah, just yeah. having the same. So it's, it's starting from the back, too, is causing more 
uh, problems with us scoring goals, I think, so just, to be honest. I think as well, it's more, as you say, they've, they've lost MTV. You think it's a psychological effect of losing that partnership in terms of it transmits confidence to the team. They're a bit more nervous now because they don't have that sort of leadership at the back with MTV Muslim at times. 100%. Um, it, Van Dijk's a big miss. I mean, leadership wise, if, if it was down to me, I was the manager of Liverpool. I, would, I know Jordan Henderson's done what he did and he's been good the last three, four last two seasons. But I think Van Dijk was, is your man, the captain of your team. Like, come on, he, he clap, he's captain Holland. He's mm. just leadership qualities, shouts all over. I mean, you're missing someone like that, even though, I mean, Henderson's not on, he's a captain or a mother. Um, and he's, you could just tell, you could play the game. We haven't seen a lot of them this season because of the lockdown, but, and you can hear the fans noise. You can hear Henderson shooting flat out. You always hear Van Dijk saying the same. So I think it's just a big miss. But, to be honest, we got lucky last season. We don't have many injuries. And then this season is just... Yeah, it's all came crashing down. I mean, you know the rookie season when they're having no injuries, I mean? That's the way, it's, that's the way it goes. Spurs last season, they were, I mean? I'm going to come back to you, Zach, right? Um, one of the things that I've been saying, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a massive fan, Ollie. I just think sometimes it can be very, very, you can be treated very harshly. But one thing where you could be critical of, Ollie, right, is I'm not saying he doesn't win big games against big teams. But the big, big games when it comes to semifinals, when it comes to that Leipzig game in the group, um, and now you've got, you think about them at Man City game last week, the biggest mentality tests they've had, they've probably failed them. Um, <laughs> And that's they have, but they have some won some big games, but not maybe when they're as important as as they are now. And you think about yeah. this game on Sunday, right? Is this the biggest test of this squad and this and this coaching team? Um, on Sunday going to Anfield, and you look at the the Anfield record in the league, they're unbeaten since 2017-18. Um, they're going to a place that's yeah. Colin Lowe was on in there, and he's a big United fan. Works for me, Wayne City. He was saying it's in his opinion the hardest place to go in Europe. Um, he said the one thing that might help is the no fans. Um, but how? Much of a mentality test is this the, the United team now on Sunday? I don't know. No, I get what they're saying there because I always feel like we're out one match away from like no, like being special. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then we always fall in at that hurdle. So I'm hoping on Sunday like we can go out and beat Liverpool. Like, but uh, I feel it's a tough place to go. But I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be, especially with injuries and all the help. Like I just, I just can't see why we can't go out and beat them. Like a death. I, I agree. I, I think it's your best. And everybody like, Mm. Uh, I think it's your best chance to beat us since the last time you beat us at Anfield, which is was it Wayne Rooney? Was it the uh, one? No, was it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, as well. I think as well. You know what? So I think this is your best chance in years to beat us at Anfield because of the situation and because you should, don't get me wrong. I said you've been lucky, but in the last couple of matches, but you've helped put on far better performances compared to last season. So, yeah, see, see one thing I was going to say, right? Um, and I'm not making an excuse for Liverpool here, right, by saying this, but I do think, out of all the teams in the league, Liverpool are the most affected by having no fans in the stadium. And there's a few reasons for that, right? Um, I think the Anfield crowd in general, especially when they're going well, um, at, what they have been over the last couple of years, you think about that night against Barcelona as well, the atmosphere, it's a tight ground in terms of, see for all that, like, Old Trafford's a lot bigger and wider, um, and all these new stadiums are going the same way, like, um, you think Liverpool is like an old style ground. I'm telling you, got a new stand, but it's like an old style ground. I've been there a few times, yeah. and the atmosphere is usually really, really good. Um, and I did that. United's coming. Um, if the fans run here on Sunday, it will be a massive, massive advantage for you. Um, and but what I would say is, you can't really measure that because everyone's playing with no fans. I'm just saying, if there was ever a game he's needed fans, it would have been this Sunday, wouldn't it? One hundred percent. <laughs> um, as you were saying, are you talking to Zach there, sorry? I say, well, he's, he's huffing now because he thinks I, I said that the fans are crap. No, it's, I know what you're saying, Gary. It is, I'm it's like a compact kind of stadium. It's like, we're not, and you know, the fa- I think we have the best fans on the, on England, like, so, but Zach might disagree. But it is a big must, to be honest, like, even the big like, games, sure, look at the Champions League nights. You know I mean, early years of the Anfield, like, and then fans have were his own. So it, it is a big mistake, but as as you said, every every team's the same. Everything's the same. See, see when it comes before Zach comes back, he's in the library. Um, must be ready to get a charge or something. But um, 
the same way to have no fans. Uh, and it's just the, whole, the way the team's I playing. No, it's Emma's just said he thinks Liverpool's got the best fans in the league. Um, he said you might disagree on it. But the one thing I would say is away fans, do, do not, we'll make a crowd, we'll make a noise in the air, go in their top of the league. Of course, they have, they'd have a bank up pack. But I just mean in terms yeah. of, I think if you look at Liverpool's performances against like, Alexa West Brom, when they haven't, I think they played really well against Liverpool, sorry, against Leicester and against Wolves. Um, yeah. And I think they played well against Spurs in the first half. Second half, they probably, if that's an ampli, they probably, they, I don't think they played that well in the second half against Spurs. I thought they were outstanding. No, no, no. That doesn't speak. That doesn't speak. And it's going the same way as West Brom, only that corner at the end, they got the goal. It was almost like a carbon copy. The second half, um, they played really, really well. But I just thought it was something that, it's really must have that performance second half. They just need them fans to carry them over the line. There's really so much clock and say during this half you know, the half time in the changing room. If he thinks things aren't going wrong, then there's not much not much, not much more motivation that you can get because the fans aren't there. So I hundred percent agree with that. We were chatting with Dante Record here. Do you think this is the the, the Dante Records and doubt this weekend? Do you think it's there's any game that's gonna be broken could be this weekend? Or are you confident? No, nah, um, to be honest, I always think it's going to be Man City that. Why? I, I just always. Be, if there's going to be any team that breaks that record, who's it going to be? Like? Mm. Here, lads, one hour thing I want to chat to chat about before before we can. Who's going to break that record? If any team's going to do it? Like who? Like. <laughs> I don't. I don't want your saying. Who's going to do it? Like. Well, one thing I want to. One thing I want to get on there right before it was bad news this week was Mark Clattenburg's comments right. Um, now he was both had a chance to have a wee, have a wee say in this, right? But I want to start with I want to start with Emmett, right? He said that um, the decisions were were easier to give at Old Trafford since Ferguson's left. Oh, go on. Right, so I was just saying there, Emmett. Um, one thing that's come up this week a lot was like Mark Clavenberg comments. He said that um, it was quite favourable to get decisions at Old Trafford. Um, now that he's Ferguson's left. Um, so do, do, and Diddy Hamans come out and said that it's pretty it's pretty um disturbing to hear that there was a bias. He's actually a Premier League referee saying that there was it was hard to give penalties against the Ferguson team. So do, 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 are so just on them comments, how how disturbing are they for you? And do you think that really hasn't much hasn't changed since he's left? If you look at all these penalties he's been getting, do you think there is a bias from referees towards Man United? I don't believe there's a bias towards Man United. Um, to be honest, correctly, penalties. Now, I, see, to be honest, it was kind of embarrassing for Klopp to even bring it up yeah. in a match. I think it's Klopp is trying to get um, get the pressure off the players by blaming our things. You know, we've been performing. We haven't been performing, so that's what he's trying to do. But see, regarding that um, Mark Gladenberg comments, that is madness for that to be said. And, Professional mm. football. I think it's, I, it's, it's probably it's probably right. Don't, don't get me wrong. United, Ferguson, the best manager ever, probably. Um, and they always had United playing great football. But there was a lot, like not a lot, but there was some decisions you were thinking, come on. And then the whole Fergie time and all, it's just. Aye. And then I, for, for a ref, a ref, and say that was just. Uh, it was it was it was very strange. I know he's not a referee anymore, but just in terms of his, he's basically questioning his own. His own integrity to be saying that. It's nice. To, it's nice to hear a referee talk about you know his uh, past no. experiences. I think he's coming out bad as well. I think he was trying to make out, or he's he's more or less made himself out to be bad. But Zach, what's your mm. sort of thoughts on that? Do you think that Klopp's a bit of a hypocrite saying that when he was saying about penalties? Liverpool do get a lot of favourable penalties too, um, and there is a lot of deception. Yeah. Players. No, well, what's your thoughts on it? Really? As you like Leicester, Leicester, I think it has twelve Premier League penalties this season. Mm-hmm. United. United have six, Liverpool have five in the league this season, and then one clap. I don't think he meant this season, though. I think he was talking about since he came then. United. Have I know, but at the end of the day, too, you have to be you have to be on the bar to win the penalties. Like, and maybe you could maybe question maybe a couple of them, but rather than that, there most of them saw some more penalties. So I just think it's irrelevant. Like, if you're on the bar and you're you're brought down again, it is a penalty. It should be a penalty. But I can understand like people's frustration. Yeah. Because like, he's obviously want United to lose, like so. If we're getting decisions, he's he's ain't gonna he's ain't gonna be happy with them. Like. I'm not happy with Liverpool. I'm not okay. happy with Liverpool get decisions. But uh, so I'm going to Rashford. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, but 
to me. Well, Rashford came out and said about Mourinho, about um, Mourinho told him how they won penalties when he was there. Did you hear about that? Mm. Not really, um, well, I'm not surprised by it at all, but do you think, Zach, right, that Klopp, I think Emmett made a great point there about we're not playing well, so he's trying to shut sort of the blame. He was chatting about fixture schedule mm-hmm. after the breaking game when they drew. Um, he's blaming penalties after Southampton um, hit them. So do you, we're do, you the same. That, uh, do you think at that or that's the timing of it too, do you think Ferguson needs to be quite good at this? Do you think that Klopp's trying to get a psychological uh, advantage? I think, I, think I think it's a point. I think it's a point. Uh, what well, uh, it doesn't really matter to me because like it doesn't say, you don't seem to be able to like have it so scary anybody is trying to get there. I don't think you can rattle so scary. It's just this fucking just. I don't think he's trying to rattle so scary. The thing you were saying earlier. Uh, at the end of the day, but like you can put the referee under all the pressure you want, but there's bar now. Like so, if if if. if, if we're not getting that coverage in the far. Like when there was no far, like when there was no far, you could come out and say something like that because then you can't, you can't judge it then because, like you maybe end the referee could be like, no, I'm not going to give him a penalty, but now like you can't really do that because they will be, they will have to check it. Like, so both of you are in agreement so then. There's no, there's no bias towards United in regards to the fans. Oh, right. but, but, um, but like, but. But no one was saying that last year, but but no, no one was saying it. No, no, it's because they're on last the year and the year before, too, because of the league position we're on. No one no, was saying that before. It's great to see you saying that. I'm a big and then when, when Fergie was one and stuff, everything was going for us, so I, I don't get it. No, don't get me wrong. There's a, like most of them are fans, but there is there was a few that or a couple that were debatable. Like, but it's it's football, it happens. I mean, there's going to be matches all the time. Throughout the world, that are going to be debatable decisions, and I think the media again are just kind of unfortunate. Well, go- mm. One thing I want to say, McGuire had a stone goal, a stone goal header ruled out the other day for nothing. Uh, that was the that was the right <laughs> thing. But I, I think I like it. Said, I think Peter Crouch said if that's ruled out, all of his goals have been ruled out. So, you know, mm. yeah. but defenders and keepers have been given too much um, leeway for years and years, so it's happened as I like, same. See the you think the many fouls we given during matches for fouls and goalkeepers, but they're not fouls. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's just that they need they need to look at it in football too, because that Maguire decision was shocking to be honest. But at the same time, you need to clear that hand ball near the end of the match. Yeah. Could have got burned there, penalty like so. I saying that you don't think there is a media, but there is a bias from referees towards um, towards United. Now we're all like we all have Facebook right, and we're all pretty vocal on other things. Um, do you think that? All these liberal fans on Facebook saying that there is a bias towards them and they get this and they get that. Do you think that's just the bitterness between the two teams? It's really, really bad. Do you think it's just the no way of the last few years? Is he saying nobody was complaining about it too much? Because you know, yeah. you're this year competing with Liverpool. Do you just think that's the bitterness between the two fans? They're just saying that they sort of wind up United fans. It's it's all for um as they say, bites, Gary. Nah. That's what it was. It's hundred percent, that's what it's Facebook. And I I'm on Twitter like and I have arguments every day on Twitter about <laughs> Liverpool and United. That's just the way it is. Now. Like it's, you know what I mean? Social media is the biggest thing. For you, especially maybe because of lockdown, you don't see your mates anywhere. You can discuss football over a pint. So uh-huh. now I think it's just... This is why... This is why getting bites. This is one of the reasons I started this, right? Because we know we, know, we don't get to chat in the pubs anymore with the bars not being open. Yes. Uh, and we're, we don't want to sit and text and everybody over a phone like So there's no... I thought it'd be great to get people on and get used to on. Great because... Fans of better, you know, better rivals and stuff. And that's been quite good. Yeah. There's quite a lot of respect between these as well. Yeah. Um, and that's the only thing I would say about both of these is Zach, you're a proper, proper United fan. Emma, you're a proper, proper Liverpool fan, right? And I think that demands respect amongst rival fans. But what I find with Facebook is you've got a lot of armchair fans writing stuff, especially yeah, like yeah. especially the moment Liverpool fans that are jumping on the whole bias and they're saying about Bruno Fernandes not being a great player and stuff, do you think that's just being, being really stupid and pro- that ain't proper for uh, saying stuff like that? Fernandes is the second best player in the league. I, from my opinion, it's still a Brown now, like, but uh, she had the decision, I mean, uh, them statements about Fernandes being not a great player. Right? Look, at the, look at the change he needed since. Like, mm. You know, that doesn't... <laughs> he's just... He's exactly what he needed. needed. Mm. Um, and then see the, the comments about being better at us, that's what it is. It's a bit of crack, but as long as, long as boys get over 30 laughing emojis on their Facebook status, they're happy. 
because they're getting bite from the other fans. That's why. That's why I think it is. But you you'll get some like see on Twitter that there's like football like Twitter pages based on like football players, yeah. and it's obviously somebody running it. And he all his job is to do is to get bites from their rival fans. So I think that's all. I was on the last show, me and Colin, right? For Vopies, right? Do you think that some fans, they're not really proper fans, but they'll just sort of put up stuff that they know people, a certain, a certain, a certain people will like and comment and share, just they sort of make them popular. You know the way, like, if you get if some Liverpool fan writes, oh, that Fernandez boy is just us, and you get all these yeah. Liverpool fans going, I fucking jump on that, that's all sad, Fernandez, do you think they just put that up? Just to get views and or they get likes and stuff. Twitter and Twitter do, do, do that. I mean, uh, Twitter is just a different ball game than Facebook. Gary, I don't know if you're on it, but I mean, I'm on it. I'm a big fan. Well, I'm not a bit. I'm on it because I'm, I, I like to follow all the stuff. I know what you mean. Uh, so there's a lot of them out there. There's boys who just want to be seen as Mr. Liverpool, but inside they don't really have a clue. Mm, like, Zach, all, Zach, for someone yeah. like you, right? You're, you're pretty vocal, but I don't think you say anything that you don't believe. Because you are a proper fan, you watch all the games. Do you think there's certain United fans, yeah. Liverpool fans, everybody else that don't really that aren't really proper fans, but they'll just put up stuff on Twitter or on Facebook just to get likes? No, like I, I would do it sometimes. You no, know, just they put up like something. Just they, <laughs> no, I knew, I, knew, I knew you would think as well. <laughs> no, I, I, no, but that's what it's all about too. Like it's all about. It about that's, that's what it's all about. Like it's football. It's fan opinion. Like but, uh, I do enjoy giving boys fighting. Like but, like. I see, like, for the likes of, like, people, like, turn around, like, Liverpool fans saying, oh, Fernandez, that's all he does is have penalties. And, like, but, like, I'm not like that there. Like, I wouldn't turn around and go, oh, ah, no, Sal, he's not great. Like, he's, you no know, or Manny, or... But I would, like, I don't know how people can keep defending Firmino, like. I do not read him, like. Well, Zach, we're going we're gonna to test this. I do not this, read Firmino, like. Zach, we're going to test this out, right? I mean, we're going to do this. We're going to try and agree on a combined 11 between the two teams. Now, I'm going to let you two pick. Gonna give yeah. the pack each, yeah. and if you can't agree on a certain right. position. All have the cast on both. All right. right. So we're gonna start off with the goalkeeper. Um, Emma, who would your goalkeeper be out of the two teams? Allison. Any complaints, Isaac? Mate, mate. Ah, JJ. You would go with the head. Has to be. Uh, right. Right. Just, this is how it's gonna work, right? What we're gonna do is if we can't, if we can't sort of agree on a player, what we'll try and do is try and justify why you're picking that player. So, um, Emma. Why would you pick Allison over there? He's just been in the the best keeper in the league for the last two seasons. Maybe up by Ray Ederson. De Gea used to be in that bracket. He's just De Gea does the the really difficult things really easily, and then the really easy things he just finds really difficult. Well, the last he, season or so, back to that. That he's he's saying he's basically he's quite error prone. He makes a lot of mistakes. What would you say that fact? <clears throat> Speechless. Is, is, is it me? Aye, right, go ahead. I am just saying. He's saying he's. he's oh no, sorry. Right, no. Uh, I know. I know. I know. going off like last season, like last last season and on the season before. Like when we were, we weren't like playing good football. Like, but like what? since the run of the good time. Like, he hasn't put it on. And then if you're going over, like, I'm judging it over six or seven seasons. Like I'm not. Like, what I want to try and do, right? As as you say, we don't want to go back years and years and years, right? But try and judge it over the last. 18 months, say so, sort of last season and the first half of the season. I think that's a good you don't be picking players off six or seven games, you want to pick them off a good extended period. Yeah, I would say I wasn't ahead of the year, no, for me, uh, that's even in the last 18 months. Uh, well, I, a lot of people would say Allison, too, like that's it's fair enough. Like, if you want to put Allison on, go for it. So, so, so last chance they say go ahead, you're going Allison, you're not, you're sticking me to here, Zach. You're stuck on with hair, right? I'm gonna have a cast and vote for me. Um, two good goalkeepers, right? Um, but over the last 18 months, I think it's very difficult to pick any keeper in the league over Allison. He barely ever makes mistakes. He's very good. He's good. He's, I can't find a weakness in his game. He's very good at everything. Um, as you say, to have him set pieces as he's strong enough at times, um, I will be one argument. And he does make some mistakes. I think he's had a good season this year, but they say that he's better than Allison. I won't be going about too far for me at the moment. No doubt it was, and that's the thing Emmett's saying. He thinks if this was three or four years ago, De Gea is probably the best in the league, as he's as he the best anymore. But I, you're entitled to your opinion. We're going to go with Allison on that one. Mm-hmm. Right, right back. This is quite interesting, right? Um, I have a funny feeling he might disagree as well on this one, but right back, Emmett, who's your right back? Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I have, um, 
defensively, Juan Bazaga is, I think, like, um, slight tackling and even holding, like, stand tackle. I think Juan Bazaga is definitely yeah. one of the best defenders in the league doing that. It's just, it doesn't offer enough going forward. So, I know Trent can be sometimes offensively mistakes, etc. but the way Liverpool and United play, I think they would need a, a tag right back on there, so I'm going to say Trent. What about you, Zach? Can you go away? I'll go Trent as well. I'll have my fullback. It's like doing what Trent's doing and what wan is doing. He's trying to watch the things wan going forward. Like, so I'd rather have Trent. Great arguments, I mean, honestly, I think Definitely. great, great point you made. I think defensively, Basaka's up over the best. Um, really, really strong. Mm-hmm. As you say going forward, I think he's improved this year going forward. But uh, it just makes my life. Trent had a bit of a dub, but it is, it is, uh, he will get uh, back to his best. He will get back to his best, and I think he's the best right back in the world. Um, uh, and you want him on in your team, like, and as you say, with the way both teams are, are we going to be a four-three-three? Yeah. No, I will. I go for three, 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 three. You want a defensive right back on there, or sorry, an offensive yeah. right back to get four. Um, so center half now. Before we start the center half, right? What we're not going to do, we're not going to include injured players, right? We want to try and pick a team that's going to be playing on Sunday. We Van Dijk been out so long and Gomez been out so long. I don't really see the the merit in putting them on there. If it was only a few weeks, maybe yes. But Van Dijk's barely played this season at all, and Gomez is the same. So what I want to do is try and piss it off what we've seen um, and going forward. So. Centre half number one, Emmett. Who would you go with? Um, Fabinho. I just think it is, even though he's a, he has his um, natural defensive midfielder, I just think he's just been spot on centre half. And um, at the minute, see if you had it asked me two years ago, Gary. Again, see, it's a hard one. You're struggling. But, you're struggling. The name a centre half. You're having to put Fabinho on there, right? But I think. Ah, well, maybe. maybe like, well, it depends if everyone. I want. I think you want Fabinho on the But no, they will come back to you, Emmett. Zach, who would your centre half be, or would you go with the two centre halves? United. I think. Yeah. I would go. Well, I would go with the two of United with Maguire and Bailly because it's good symmetry. Um, uh, I think Maguire looks a lot better with someone quicker. They can know we can play higher up a bit. Like Maguire looks. A far different player, at least improved the last couple of weeks massively. And uh, what I want to do, what I want to do, right? I'm going to ask you this, right? Just to try and get a bit of fairness on there, right? Klopp, mm-hmm. Klopp, or the more you wake up and you see United or Liverpool made a double signing, Maguire and Bay have come on, would you want them? Would you take them? And would they start for you at the moment? I will. I don't, when you mentioned under players, I don't know. You see, I thought you weren't including Matip as well, so that's why I thought I didn't really yeah, have him on me. I think Matip's going to be fat for this game, and he's been on uh, He's not, he's, what I mean with Matip is he's not a long term injury, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, right, right, right. So, I, well, my first offender would be Matip. Um, I've always liked Eric Bowie. Um, I've always thought he was just, he has the, the attributes to mm. um, do well in the Premier League. Mm. He, he's, he's quick, he's well. strong, he's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put Maguire on though. Um, I know he's, he's got. A, he's got a lot. He's got a, he's got a lot better, but he's, mm. he's still. I think he's still error prone sometimes. And Jack said about um, them two backing each other up, like they a good partnership. Yeah. A lot of the time, it's Bowie as um, Jay on outs. Um, <laughs> Maguire. No, I not agree with that. Exactly. See before you get to this area. Do you think Maguire is an R one with the media? Always on his back. He could have six great games, non said. As soon as one bad game, he's straight on. Uh, no, like, see, if go- uh, like, you see all their memes online now. Like, if Maguire makes a mistake, the memes up straight away. But I see, like, Maguire's not worth 35 million, but first person, I'm at that, their hands up. But if he was like 40 million, 30, 35 million, you'd be saying he's a good center half. Like, it's because he was 85 million, then everybody's comparing him to Van Dyke. They're not comparing him to be a good defender. They're comparing him to Van Dyke. He's not on Van Dyke's level, but definitely with Van Dyke out, the two centre halves has to be Maguire and Bay. So we've had a bit of a wall here with, with players, right? So the three players that's been mentioned is Maguire, Bay, and Maddox. We need to pick two from them. So what I'm going to get you to do is name your two centre halves, and we'll see where we are after that. So who's your two centre halves, Emmett? Uh, Matt Hape and Bay. There's one vote each for them, too. Zach, who's your two centre halves? Bay and Maguire. 
Like by so Faiz on Faiz two votes and the vote goes to me and Maguire or Matup. This is a strange one, right? Because if it was me, I would I would have Matt Maguire and Matup. Um, because I think Faiz his pace gets him out of a lot of trouble. I think he makes a lot of mistakes. I think Maguire is really harshly treated. I think his pace is his biggest issue. Very good in the air. <laughs> And I think he is very harshly treated because of the price tag. He is compared to Van Dijk, mm-hmm. as you said, Zach. And that's not his fault. Um, mm. You're awesome. right in saying that Maguire is he's treated toughly by the media. And when he has a good game, um, he's not, I don't think he's ever uh, rewarded, like, well, praised enough for it. Mm. So I, he's actually right in saying that. But at the same time, I just would not have him on my starting team. Um, mm. He's just. Too for me. Tough, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Maguire. I'm gonna go with Maguire. Uh, I can say it's very hard to call. I would have. I would have. Um, Matt up in Maguire is me too. Um, I just think Maguire's had a really good season. I know he had a bit of a shaky start with the whole thing we we um, happened in Greece, but I think I think he's had a strong season. Um, so I'm gonna put him on there. So we're gonna go with Maguire and buy left back. Um, who's your left back, Zach? Uh, it would be Robertson, but I, I still think I think Luke Shaw's a good player. But Robertson definitely is the best left back. I think Shaw's a good team. No, Emmett? Robertson. There's no questions. Robertson's uh, the best in the world. What about you, Emmett? No, no arguments here. No arguments here. But uh, he's right in saying that um, Luke Shaw's played a lot better. He's he's keeping tails of the team. I mean, yeah. so so I agree here. But um, uh, Robertson for me is just yeah, he's a good player. So. Uh, Robertson, but he has oh, Robertson. Uh, Robertson, 100%, but I mean, Robertson, he's not been as good defensively as he has previous seasons, mm. so he has getting um, caught out a few times, but still going forward, and I most of the time he has defensive forward. Forward. I think he's been very, very good going forward this year, Robertson, as you say, it's defensively, he's been a bit suspect, but as you but, say, it, when you've been uh, in there. Um, again, again, I think because the team's set up against us, because of the buff we normally play away, and they're setting up the counter that, I think it's and mm-hmm. crap needs to find a reason, a way to get it around that. So moving on, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Big, uh, boys, right? And I think this is a massive area for Liverpool. And I think, I think if he play, if he plays in this position, I'm not sure he will. I think it gives Liverpool a massive chance of winning the game on Sunday. Um, Fabinho has been playing a lot at the back, um, and I think that's one of the reasons maybe Robertson's getting getting caught out at times the left back because Fabinho's not there to cover that ground. He's playing at centre half. But midfield three, um, we're going to play with one. I would imagine one, one in front of the fence and two in front. Aye, so who would your CDM be, um, Emmett? CDM would be, um, uh, well, Fabinho. 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 No, what about you, Zach? No arguments there? I'll go for, I'll go for Fabinho as well. Nah, I think for me, he's, he's the best holding on fear in the league. He's brilliant, and I think that's what Liverpool's really missing at the moment. And, there, and if you take Henderson out there yeah. as well, and he's playing at the back, they're missing two of their midfielders that's holding on the league. So I think Klopp's going to have to trust I've been reading that Matip's See his next two positions now, but... It'll be interesting. Matip, touch and, touch and go. If he can play, they, need, they won't have to play the young boy in there. Um, one of the boys, Phillips or Williams, because I don't think they can afford to lose Fabinho on my feet. Um, this weekend, what do you think? Um, I wouldn't start Williams, to be honest. Um, what I've seen him is just... And I wouldn't start Phillips either. So I, I, I don't know what the club's going to do, to be honest. Hopefully Matip's fit and we can have him and uh, Fabinho at the back. But... Um, if it was me, I would start still, still start Fabinho centre half along with Matip. Um, Phelps mm. is someone you play against. West Ham, Burnley, he's good in there. See on his feet. Rashford, Martial, take a hand to him. So we, I don't think not Phelps will be. Opposition, opposition fan, where would you rather see Fabinho play? Defence or Matip? Uh, defence. You would rather have him in defence because you think it would probably give Bruno a better chance of dominating the Matip, wouldn't you? So, right, moving on. Um, the two in front, this will be quite interesting. Uh, Bruno and Pogba. Manfield number. Oh, you're going. You're going with Pogba and Bruno. Ah, hundred percent. Not even. Not even. What was, did you ask me? Ah, uh, what's your Manfield piece? And Bruno and Pogba will be the two in front for him. See, to be honest, guy, I there was a thing on my uh, BBC the other day, and I actually put Pogba and me. Um, me starting eleven, but because we're playing uh, a different formation now, um, and because I had. I actually have Fabinho in the centre half position, but so if Fabinho playing CDM, Bruno Bruno Bruno's definitely starting. But I would have um, you're going off the last eighteen months. 
Uh, I know Thiago done play for Liverpool during them 18 months, but yeah, you can't take him out of the starting team. You know what? You know what? That would be my midfield three as well. I would have Thiago on over Pogba. I would. No chance. No would. chance. You know why? Um, I think no Thiago's a lot more consistent. I think you know what you're going to get with him. Pogba has his days, yes, but I think it can be equally as bad as well. I think he can go missing times. It can but if you're, go- if you're going off this game on Sunday, who's going to have a bigger influence in the game? I think Pogba has a bigger influence. Thiago's too. Uh, it's not going to it's a threat like I know he's just spread away last night but I think Fred will do a good job on him look. I think Thiago you look what he did with Bayern Munich won the Champions League Um, he, he always loves to go forward as well that's what I love about him on the field uh, player yeah. he never likes to go back or sideways he likes to try and get the ball forward Um, uh, he's got a really good eye for a pass as you say yeah Pogba is probably more of a goal for it I think there's very different uh, players um, yeah. No, I'd still go Pogba. I think Pogba's a far better. Wouldn't say far better, but I think he's definitely better than Thiago. A hundred percent. It's two different players, to be honest, Gary. Like, so, uh, um, well, at the end of the day, we can't agree on it, so it's going to have to go down to the end for me. I'm having Thiago over Pogba. Sorry, Zach. That's right. Uh, That's right. On Hyundai, the, month, the front three. This is going to be interesting as well. I'm just going to get you to name your front three because there's no point for three players. So, uh, right. who would your front three be? Manny Salah, right. Rashford. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who did you say? Manny, Sa- Manny at the left, Salah at the right, and Ra- Rashford is your number nine. 100%. I, agree. I would agree with that too. I would agree with that. I think that's probably the best from three. I think Rashford is your, uh, your um, he's up there with Bruno. He's just, mm. he's a. Well, Rashford's what is it, Rashford? 23. I mean, he's still, I always, I always thought Rashford was. Knew, I knew he was going to be a great player, but like he just as a number. I think United did he get him on that number nine position more. I know Cavani is there at the minute and he's doing he's scoring goals, but I mean, as he is good technically, as Rashford not. He's just he gets goals. I Cavani, like him but, yeah. You like him my lefty? I like him at the left. <laughs> So see, you see, like, see in that team, right? You some names, must like as you say, probably the most big, the biggest name to be left out of that team is Pogba. Obviously, you don't agree with that, Zach. Um, no. I think, you know what? The thing, the thing that Pogba is right. I think a lot okay. of, a lot of, a lot of football fans see a lot of things that Pogba don't like. I think United fans at times can let him away a bit. I like him. I like him to be honest. He's a big status. Um, but at times, do you think he he, he doesn't give a hundred percent? At times, I think sometimes he can go missing. Like if Bruno, if he's your 2 0 down in a big game, you can rely on maybe Bruno to pull it back and he will not lose lose interest. Whereas I think Pogba at times, yeah, they're just completely down tools, and that's the difference. United this year's Bruno's on there, and he makes you stronger as well. Um, I don't know what do you think, sir. He's not happy, is he? <laughs> See, I'm, I was like, I'm Pogba, I'm Pogba's biggest critic as well. Like, he enjoys me mad at times, like, but. If you like, I don't like. I think oh, that's one area of the pitch. I think we are better in Liverpool. At, like, I would even like. I think Fred's massively underrated. Through like a work he does, you'll see on Sunday exactly what he does. Like, and then you know. Well, lads, hey, we're getting um, we're getting that stage of the show, right? Um, Emmett, where's the game going to be won and lost on Sunday for you? What's the big what's 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 the big thing that Liverpool need to do to win or United need to do to win? What's what? Where's the game going to be won and lost for you? Um. To be honest, I can see that we're having most of the possession, um, more chances. It's just down to Liverpool at the moment. They're not clinical. Um, well, I know they were against Crystal Palace, but that was a one-off game. Looking form-wise, over the last month or two, they're not clinical. So I think it's going to come down to being clinical, and hopefully De Gea has a shit game. Um, <laughs> but as again, you need to get. You know, it's not the same as a smooth smaller team. So what I was saying around about. Smaller teams, they're blocking out the Robertson and Trent effect. If you needed the job on that there, then they'll have a chance. But it's going to be interesting to see what way OA lines up as and if he's going to play the full back, uh, wing backs or if he's just going to play. Was it free the back? You normally play, sorry. All right, well, same All right. thing, free. But um, where's the game going to be one lost? Um, if, if you need to go with a back five, Liverpool, all one. If you need to go with four, two, three, one, well one. But if he goes with five at the back, you lose someone in midfield or you lose another attacker. So I'd have to, I'd fancy Liverpool. But if he goes if he goes with four, two, three, one, I think it'll be I think it'll be two or three one the United. Why do you think that though? 
because we've improved player for player there, and there are more players in the team, so it couldn't be as simple as that. What do you? What do you? I see. I can. I can see United. United getting a um a one at home. Um, uh, I think it's either going to be a level one, or I think it's going to be. Well, you see a draw best United. Ah, uh, I know. No, probably. I. No, I United. You know, might set up the play. Do you get a draw? I don't think it's a bad result. I think if we. Hmm. I don't want those. Uh, those are bad results because you shouldn't be going into any game on the draw. I support the best team in the world. Did he finish off the show? I want to thank you for. I see you finish off the show. I want to thank you for coming on as well. I'm um, very brave to come on here before a big game because you know it's going to be posted up as well. So, um, I for in terms of that, and I'm sure a lot of people that do watch will give you a lot of respect for that, and he's have my respect. Um, last thing, gonna leave with his last word. Um, Zach, when I start with you, what's your prediction on Sunday score? Uh, I'll go 3 1 United. 3 1 United. Emmett? I'm gonna say, um, 2 2 1 Liverpool. 2 1 Liverpool. Can see United scoring, scoring like because of our offense, but I think we'll be too strong for them. I think it's gonna be a really good game. I think sometimes these games, ain't, I think over the last few years, they've been spoiled. They've been Mourinho and stuff, setting up very negative. Uh, right. Like Ollie, yes, they'll be reserved, but they'll have a lot more about them on the counter-attack. And I do think there's going to be goals on it, because as I said, I don't think Liverpool, with a Fabinho, is going to play at the back, and it probably will. I think that'll give the likes of Bruno and Pogba a bit more room in my field. And it mm-hmm. could be a disadvantage for Liverpool. Um, McTominay, I think I, McTominay might start, though. No, I think he will, and I think that means then, They'll have a lot more about them on space in the counter attack. <laughs> He's getting the advice here. <laughs> um, no, I think that'll, that'll play in the. I think if Fabinho plays in midfield, even if it meant playing the young boy at the back, I think it'll play in the United's hands if Fabinho plays in, in defence. Um, and I think that's what happens. So I'm going to go for a high scoring game. I think it's going to be a 2 2 draw. It'd be a great game for the neutral. Um, I think United will never have a better chance to go to Anfield than one with, with the fact there's no fans there. But I'm expecting Liverpool to respond as well. And if United do do one, they'll have to play really, really well. See the way they played in the last three games, that will not be good enough to beat, beat Liverpool. Um, but I'm expecting both teams to step up, and that's my prediction, a 2 2 draw. So, hey, lads, thanks for coming on. Really enjoyed the show. Um, we'll yeah. see you again. And I, want you, I hope you enjoy the game on Sunday. Cheers, Gary. Right, Emmett. Good luck. Right, Jack. Right, Cheers, Gary. Good no luck. Worries, lads. Good luck. Right. That's us, lads. That's us. Good luck. Right. He's at her, hey. Hey, good show.